Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to the Correct Views. Sam I B reporting for the Media Speaks. <clears throat> Guys, I got some important news to get to today. I want to start off real quick with a very, very important charity. Uh, many of you know I support charities and I promote them so that when you tune in to listen to the news, I help the charities. And this is one of them. Dania Mobley Christ, uh, D A N E A M O B L E Y hyphen K R I S T. Uh, you can also look up the charity connection. This is a person who helps people who are sick. How do I know this? Because she tried to help my dad, but my dad waited too long to get help and ended up dying. Um, Dania did not do that. And she now is sick herself. She has cancer, and I am sending everyone there to help her, please. Do so. She's a wonderful person. She's been there for countless people when they're sick, and now she's down. So let's pull together. Go to the charity connection. All right, guys. First story I want to lead off with. Oh, my God. This pisses me off so bad. Mike Adams from Natural News. Mike, 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 Mike. I changed much of my diet over the years listening to you. I take a vitamin regimen that keeps me very healthy thanks to you and some other people. You're wrong about Bitcoin! You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong! Guys, listen to this. For those of you that don't know, Bitcoin, you could mine Bitcoins if you were a mathematical genius. It was a program, I'm going to give this to people in a nutshell, um, it was a program designed by somebody that sounds like they have an oriental name of some kind. No one has any idea who this person is. Well, they created something called Bitcoins, and if you could solve mathematical uh, problems of varying degrees, you could mine Bitcoins. There are only like, 21 million, I don't know, whatever Bitcoins printed. Printed. Um, and they're, they're online currency that undermines existing currencies. And you can buy them and they flux based on what they're worth. Uh, based, on, uh, based on their demand. Some idiot let loose how many of these was it? They let, and basically for a while they were like $35 a piece and then a week ago or six days ago they were $247 a piece and now they are down to like $120. But again, last night I saw that they were, because I was looking into it, they were up to 180. I found someone for 164, and I'll get to that in a minute. And I personally would buy one. Anyway, some bonehead tried to destroy it by sending out 13,627,627,000. Right, oh, I'm sorry. They're in bits, they go down. Basically about 14 million bitcoins. Flooded the market. It doesn't take a genius to understand that, yeah, that's going to bring it down. But Mike Adams isn't understanding by calling bitcoin over was why he is wrong. Is because bitcoin took off after Cyprus. When the banks went after Cyprus. The only people that could buy and sell a damn thing were people that owned Bitcoins. And if you didn't, then you could only get $100 a day out for anything. Now that this bonehead, not Mike, but this idiot, whoever he is, that flooded the free Bitcoins for everybody, has temporarily crashed the market. Everyone is saying that Bitcoins have lost their value. Let me ask you a question. Has the devil quit being evil? Has the European Union quit being evil? Because all they have to do is do something else idiotic like this that screws up the banking system. And Bitcoins are going to go right back to the value they had before. The time to buy Bitcoins is now! The only time you have to worry about Bitcoins being worthless is if businesses of all varieties stop taking them. I would argue that as long as you could buy necessities, 
even online with Bitcoins. In case of a disaster like Cyprus, you can order food in water as long as the delivery routes are open. You can live. You can have access to money because of the Bitcoins. So my, my, my advice listening to this, this is what I am trying to do. Buy a Bitcoin or two. Buy enough of them that you can get rid of them when the price goes up. And it's going to go up again. I would not listen to Michael Adams on this. I also would not go out and spend all of my money on Bitcoins because I think obviously they flux a lot. My argument is this flux in price doesn't mean anything. The only thing that matters is that some places still take them. And they do. And they will continue to do so. And no one needs to panic until that happens. Now, can anybody tell me how in seven hells to buy a Bitcoin? I spent five and a half hours. I went to 56 sites trying to buy a Bitcoin and couldn't do it. I emailed some bonehead that never replied to me. Yeah, Jorgensen, you're a bonehead. Trying to buy one off of him, whoever that is. I'm pretty sure the only people that own Bitcoins were people of the mathematical intellect to buy it. Because to this day, I don't know how to buy a Bitcoin. And don't tell me banks. It's because of Cyprus. I'm buying Bitcoins because I don't bank. Don't tell me you got to buy it through a damn bank. That defeats the whole purpose. So, I have no idea how to buy one. Would I put my money where my wealth is? Yes, I've been trying to buy one for days. All right, here we go. Prison Planet, well, actually, I saw it on Prison Planet as well, but it's RT. 6.3 magnitude quake strikes near Iran's Boschler nuclear facility death reported. Sometimes it just sucks to be right, and this is one of them. Does anybody recall Sam I.B. of the correct views saying that this is one of the worst places to build one of these on the globe? And I was right! 20 people have been killed after a 6.3 magnitude earthquake struck near the perfectly safe Buchler in Iran. AFP reported around 500 people have been injured, according to IRNA. The area is home to the perfectly safe and nothing to worry about. Perfectly for peaceful purposes, and you can believe that if you're an idiot. Bushler Nuclear Power Plant. Even if they are not planning to build a dirty bomb with this, and I certainly believe that they are, and everyone that listens to this has seen the uh, documents I've shown that point to this, and I'm not talking about the, uh, the cliches. Even if they are, the depth of the quake was 6.2 miles. It was followed by several aftershocks, which measured 4.8 to 6.1. In other words... They are repeating the errors of Fukushima. And Fukushima is not over. I'm halfway through watching Nuked in the Skies. It's posted on Radchip.com. And I mean, it talks about, well, let's face it, the list of the most untalented people to ever live. Kim Kardashian, Lil Wayne, Rihanna, perhaps the most untalented of all people in the whole world. Kelly Osborne, who her dad's amazing, I don't know what the hell happened to her, they're, uh, they're coming down with radiation sickness from flying because Fukushima is emitting so many particles in the air that the jet set, if you will, the people that fly all of the time, are getting juiced. And, oh, how far is it? At 21 minutes and 30 seconds into Nuked in the Skies on Red Chick, you will find that the winds from Fukushima are carrying mostly to Anchorage, Seattle, and Los Angeles. Exactly what I predicted. So, I mean, forget about the fact that we're talking about... I mean, come on, Rihanna. You got me. She's like listening to a fax machine. Uh, Kim Kardashian, anybody dumb enough to date a talentless hack like Kanye? Come on now, you got a pumpkin for a head. 
My point is, I don't want these people dead. I'd like them to never make music or ever be an actress again, but I don't want them dead. The point is, they are like human guinea pigs flying up here, and they're getting juiced, and they are the first in the skies. And they've been poisoned by Fukushima, and they are in there the most. I should say that they're the first to be juiced like this. So, I mean, follow this story. I mean, they're, they're dreadful. I mean, they're unlistenable, talentless, terrible. The death of America resides in the names I gave you. But we don't want anybody dead here at the correct views. And they, I mean, you can laugh if you want, but what they are experiencing flying back and forth could soon be what's happening to you and I, because Fukushima is still emitting. Um, and listen to this. Walmart executive who had described sales as disaster leaves. Jerry Murray, you worked for the, one of the most despicable companies that ever lived. That would be Walmart. You had what was coming to you. However, you called a spade a spade, and I thank you for doing so. Way to go, my friend. The Walmart stores executive who called the retailer's February sales a total disaster in an internal email obtained and reported by Bloomberg News has left the company, and they said that it was voluntary. Yeah. And monkeys are going to come flying out of the correct view set to come to see you. The point is, the economy is becoming so bad and so dismal that even places like Walmart are going down. And if you shop at Walmart, you are part of the problem, by the way. And I would be more than happy to address this if you wish to argue the point with me. My point being that when Walmart starts dropping like the plague and getting rid of people who work for them that even point this out, it's a sign that things are going very, very bad in the economy. Just like when idiots get nuked and die in the sky, the idiots are still human. And the point is, they are also foreshadowing what's coming to us. Are you seeing how this show is tying together? Good, I've got one more for you. Italian Supreme Court President blames Bilderberg for terrorist attacks. I am completely loving this gentleman here. Um, look it up, Bilderberg, why it mattered to me. It is the movie I made. For those of you that do not know, Bilderberg is an illegal, yes, I said illegal, and I stand by that. Look up what the Logan Act is. It is an illegal meeting of some of the biggest movers and shakers in the world, and now there is a lot of evidence that they are, in fact, uh, behind terrorist attacks. And I'm going to read a lot of this. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson writes, For InfoWars, Honorary President of the Supreme Court of Italy and former senior investigative judge Ferdinando Impossimato, the man who prosecuted the case involving the assassination attempt against Pope John Paul II, so he's no hack, has sensationally accused the Bilderberg Group of being behind terrorist attacks in Europe. No, of course not. Well, boy, it does, history has never hinted that uh, leaders meeting behind closed doors could ever do anything like this. In an interview with the Articolo Tre website, in Passamato, who was also involved in the case involving the kidnapping and murder of former Italian Prime Minister Aldo Moro, said that he, quote, found a document that left me appalled, end quote, implicating the Bilderberg Group in conspiring with the far-right organization Ordine Nuvo to commit terror attacks. Uh, that, in Italian, stands for a new order. Speaking of unsolved murders in Italy and the document in his possession, Impossimato stated, it goes on, and when it comes to slaughter, it also speaks of the Bilderberg group. I believe that this document is real. I did some tests, and I can say that behind the strategy of tension in these slaughters, there is also the Bilderberg group. The sort of big brother is over maneuvering using terrorists and masons. Oh, but sh if you criticize the Masons, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're a hack that nobody's ever heard of, like Sam from The Correct Views. I would say uh, Fernando Impossimato would certainly prove that wrong. The strategy of tension refers to a policy under the auspices of Operation Gladio. Look it up, G-L-A-D-I-O. It is a NATO Cold War stay-behind project that sought to create an expedient political climate in Europe by having its agents carry out terror attacks, which were then blamed on both the far-left and far-right political groups. 
You can go on about Gladio if you want to, but listen to this. You had to attack civilians, the people, women, children, innocent people, unknown people, far removed from any political game. This is from former Gladio agent Vincenzo Vinciguera, V-I-N-C-I-G-U-E-R-A-A-A. He explained that in sworn testimony. And the reason is quite simple. They are supposed to force these people, the Italian public, to turn to the state, that is the government, for you Kim Kardashian fans, to ask for greater security. This is the political logic that lies behind all of the massacres and the bombings which remain unpunished, because the state cannot convict itself, the government, or declare itself responsible for what happened, he added. In other words, high-ranking officials now in Italy and all over the world are starting to either admit or realize what many of us have been saying for a very, very long time. And that is that things like Bilderberg are leading to the lowering of a quality of life and a general injustice on all of the masses such has not been seen at least since Adolf Hitler and before that perhaps ancient Rome. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. My name is Sam I.B. Please look up TheMediaSpeaks.com where you'll see Court Kyle DeLake and myself posting articles on a regular basis. Something very, very big is about to drop on that site, by the way, and that's all I can say, but it's going to be in the coming weeks. How's that? Uh, lastly, I want to thank Bank, uh, Barbie Backwoods for donating to the show. I am going to be keep. I'm going to continue sending out dunce caps. I need you guys all to donate. For those of you that don't know, look up the Correct Views Dunce Cap Awards, and I need you guys to help me pay for it because postage is like fifty bucks on these things. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night and God bless.